Don't worry, August isn't quite here yet, but I'm showing you August in the mystery journal so that when it comes time for you to set up your own journal pages for August, you've got some ideas in mind already. This bullet journal setup is a super adorable one. It's themed around vintage letters and postage and old technology, and it features a really adorable raccoon as well. Hi, it's Erin. Thank you so much for planning with me, and thank you as well to the sponsors of today's video, Hubman and Chub Girl, who have very kindly supplied all of the stationery that I'm using for this theme. If you aren't familiar with Hubman and Chub Girl, they are a small stationery business based out of Toronto, Canada, and they make the most adorable stationery products designed to make it really easy for anyone to express themselves and stay organized in their journals and planners without having to have artistic skills. They started out as a husband and wife duo, which is where the name Hubman and Chubgirl comes from, and they've expanded into a small team now, but every single piece of artwork on every single one of their stickers and washi tapes and journals and everything is personally hand-drawn with love by Chubgirl herself. Also, a large selection of their products from their planner stickers, their sticker sheets, their Hobonichi kits, etc. are all printed, cut, packaged, and shipped worldwide to customers from their offices in Toronto. They're such an amazing place to start if you're just getting into journaling or if you like the look of a really cohesive collection of stuff together because their box sets and bundles are actually designed so that you'll have everything that you need to get you through a theme. Some of them even include a journal so it's the perfect beginning point for someone who's brand new to bullet journaling or if you just wanted to have a bunch of stuff that already looks really good together without you having to think about anything at all. They also have a range of monthly subscription options so that you can have stickers or a whole box set delivered to you every month without you ever having to worry about what your next theme is going to be. If you'd like to check out Hubman and Chub Girl for yourself I have a link to their site down in the description and you can also use my code Erin to get 15% off your first order. The items I'm using in this video are from the Vintage Stationery Bundle and also some from the Vintage Stationery Journaling add-on. But if the whole collection is a bit much for you, you can also get some of these items individually or in smaller bundles of just sticker sheets and things like that, so there are lots of options. You can be very flexible here. Let's take a closer look at what you actually get in the Vintage Stationery Bundle. Starting with the journal, this one includes a journal. This is actually not the journal that I'll be working in today for the theme, but I wanted to include it because you do get it with the bundle. It's an A5 dot grid journal, which means it is perfect for bullet journaling. It has a little pen loop attached here. It's got 160 dot grid pages, 115 GSM cream paper and lay flat binding. It's got two ribbon bookmarks inside and a pocket in the back too, so you can carry things around with you if you want to. Then we've got three vinyl sticker sheets. These ones have kind of medium sized stickers on them. You get lots of detail in these ones. I love the little raccoons, especially the ones with cameras because how adorable. Then we have the vintage stationery planner kit and this is more of your functional stickers that you can use for headings and little time blocking sections and reminders on your functional like weeklies or if you use like the Hobonichi planning styles. I don't entirely know how they work but I believe that these are for those. These are paper stickers so you can write on these ones with your regular old fine liner or your biro and that should go really well and I love having the headings for each day of the week so that it makes making your weeklies really easy. Then we have these five sheets of tiny planner stickers. These ones are also vinyl. They're adorable. They're so small, which means you can tuck them into little corners and have just a pop of decoration without going too heavy handed. How cute are all the illustrations for this theme? I love that we've got little letters and booklets and wax seal stamps and fountain pens and little bundles of letters and envelopes. They're so cute. And we've got these five die cut stickers for when you really need to make an impact. These ones are big and bold and they would go great on a water bottle, but I will be using them in the journal. We have this adorable little enamel pin. This one I actually kept for myself. Everything else I'm showing you went to the winner of the mystery journal, but this one I kept for myself. We've got two gorgeous little patterned washi tapes. You can see a bit of the patterns here. One is pink with just the stationery elements on and a little bit of gold gilding. The other one has the characters and a little diagonal stripe that's very sweet. Our next few items come bundled together in the variety sticker pack. This one has seven different sticker sheets. So we have these lovely gold gilded stamps here, like postage stamps, so appropriate for the theme. These little Polaroids that actually inspired the whole cover page, even though I didn't end up using them specifically for that. These ones are some clear stickers, some wax seals and little dividers. These might be my favorite functional stickers I've ever seen. The gold gilded days of the week with some little extra spaces for notes or your own headings. Love them, obsessed. We've got these little watercolor gold gilded kind of abstract seal moments. These ones highlight the botanical illustrations you'll find throughout the theme. They're just so classy. 
Then we've got a sheet of washi stickers. These ones are all letter and envelope and postage themed. And then all the stuff in this vellum envelope is from the Vintage Stationery Journaling add-on. So we've got some more sticker sheets. These ones are prompts for any kind of long-term journaling I'm looking forward to, I'm thankful for, I'm grateful for. I always love the palette sticker sheets because you can use them functionally, you can use them decoratively. Likewise, with this text version, you can use the headings that are printed on or you can add your own to the other little swatches there. Same thing with this palette sheet, although this one has a couple of little floral touches as well. And these ones are interesting. These are actually tabs that you can add to the edges of your pages. There are 12 here, so there are just enough to do the whole year. And you can just put January, February, March, close that around the edge of the page. And then you have a quick reference to which month you're at in the journal. You can jump between them really easily. These ones are weekly habit trackers. You just write what the habit is and fill it out as you complete the habit. Hello, Mitsu. You must inspect everything and make sure it's ready. This is the monthly version of those habit trackers so you've got space to track your habit across the entire month any month and we've got these cute little numbers as well which I am going to use immediately on the calendar spread so I'm pretty spoiled for choice this time shall we get into it and see what I can make with these goodies I think it's time to get started this is the mystery journal we're working in. If you're not familiar with the concept of my mystery journal, it is a journal that I have fully set up for the second half of the year and then given away to a lucky winner. So this journal's actually complete. I've done all of it up to December. I've posted it, it's with the winner, it's out of my hands now, but I will show you the setups as we go through the rest of the year. I'm lettering August kind of high and in the middle of our first spread here. This one is just going to be a cover spread just for fun. And I'm using the 817 Tombow because it's a really good color match to the colors in the Vintage Stationery Bundle. I'm also adding a little drop shadow with this kind of mocha colored light Tombow as well. I wanted this heading to have a really cute kind of a vibe to it. I wanted it to feel like it fit well with the stickers we're going to use. So I've gone for a very rounded and upright kind of lettering style this time, which is a bit different to what I normally do. I think it's adorable. It's so cute. Next, we're going to add some washi tape to the top and bottom of the spread. Such an easy way to add interest to a page really quickly is to just whack some washi tape on it. And these ones are horizontally oriented washi tape. So I'm gonna be using them horizontally most of the time. I also love to stack my washi tapes, so I'm just popping one on top of the other. There's a lot going on on these washi tapes as far as patterns, so when you put them together like this, that's actually a lot of visual weight. It's very busy for your eye, so I don't want to put anything else too close to them or it's going to feel overwhelming. Now, I got the idea from one of these sticker sheets, but then I ended up using different stickers for this because these were a little bit thinner. I wanted it to have a little bit of a Polaroid vibe going on on the front page here. So it's like our vintage stationery raccoon here who's writing and posting letters has included some pictures in the package. I just think that's really cute. I stuck the first one down on the page and drew the Polaroid around it, but I wanted them to kind of layer on top of each other a little bit. And I thought the easiest way to do that would be instead of drawing out all of my Polaroids to actually stick the stickers down on some white sticker paper in around about the same size and then just stick those directly onto the page and that way I can cover some of the washi tape I don't have to kind of cut away little awkward weird bits of it and just make the whole process much quicker and easier on myself so that's what I'm doing here and the really wonderful thing about this is now I can experiment with the placement of them without having to commit anything to the paper besides that one on the left that I've already done that's drawn straight into the book. I can slide things around and alternate the angles and play a little bit and then decide how I want things before I have to commit to anything. And I love that. So in this case, I'm trying to make sure I have some green represented on the left side and also on the right side because there's a lot of pink kind of going on in these other dudes. So I wanted to make sure that we have some green to bring in the whole color theme. And also a mix of the little pictures of the raccoon versus the kind of zoomed in pictures of the stationery too. So a bit of everything is represented on this cover spread. Also, because I drew that first one directly onto the page, it has the black line around it. I didn't want that to be something that was only on one of these pictures. So I'm jumping in with a Sakura Pigma Micron pen and I'm just drawing around the edges, making sure that I don't go in front of the lines where another picture kind of crosses over the top of another one. So they really keep that dimension and that sort of 3D feeling. The fine liner doesn't go so well over the washi tape. I did draw it over the top there to see if that would work okay. You can't really see it, but it didn't smudge away or anything either, so I think it's fine. It's 
coming together so well and looking so, so cute, but I wanted to make sure I was using this space underneath where it says August in between those lovely Polaroids. So I'm adding a quote here. I'm using my brown marker from Tombow with some letter stamps, which is one of my favorite combinations to do ever. And I deliberately looked up a quote to do with writing and letters because I felt like that would be a really cute way to do this. And technically the winner of the mystery journal receives it in the mail. So this is kind of a really exciting letter, hopefully for them to receive. Maybe more of a package than a letter, but anyway, I'm adding on my quote here. It's from Susan Lendroth, and this quote is, To write is human, to receive a letter divine. I could not agree more. I felt like there was a bit of space in between the bottom of the quote there and the washi tape, so I just wanted to add a little divider in there from the divider sheet and adding a couple more of the vinyl stickers around too, just to fill some gaps, make everything feel cohesive and make sure that our theme is really well represented on the cover spread here. And it's done, that's the cover spread, which means we can start to get into the functional setups. I am not using a ruler in this setup. I like the organic, slightly wiggly lines. If you prefer a ruler, then you should absolutely go for it with a ruler. This is going to be the calendar spread for July. I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on the left page, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday boxes on the right. The journal I'm working in for the mystery journal is an A5 size journal, so it has pretty typical dot grid spacings here for an A5 journal in case you would like to copy this setup and try it in your own. If you're using a different size journal, you might find that you need to adapt it, but if it's bigger than A5, you could still use these measurements, you'll just have more space around them on the page. I wanted to use some of the planner stickers for the names for each day of the week here. So I'm actually using my little guillotine straight edge cutting tool to slice these ones down to the size that I need them to be. So I really like to make stickers work for me. You could just use them the way they're intended, but I like to get a bit creative with things sometimes. So that's what we're doing here. I always like my weeks to start on a Monday. So that's the way I set up my calendars. But if you prefer a Sunday start or another day entirely, then you can absolutely set yours up in the way that works best for you. Once we've got these headings down for each day of the week, I'm going to jump in with my little number stickers and add the number for each day of the week right onto each of the boxes, which is a bit of a process. It takes some time, but I think the overall effect at the end is really worth it. And these little stickers of the numbers here are designed to look like tiny, tiny wax seals. And I just think that's so cute. And the colors look perfect with the theme because of course they do. I even tried to match my jumper, my sleeves to the setup here. So let me know if you think I did a good job of that. This is gonna take us a little while, but once they're all on the page, it's gonna look so good. And if you have them, I really recommend a pair of sticker tweezers when you're working with stickers this small. It just makes it so much easier to wrangle them into exactly where you want them to sit. I wanted to bring a bit of the Polaroid theme from the previous page into this one, but I have these Polaroid stickers that kind of inspired the other one. They're a little bit smaller than the ones on the cover spread, which is why I thought they'd work better over here. I had a little bit of trouble still fitting them in here. I wanted to make it look like they were hanging from a string, kind of like they're up decoratively or they're developing or something like that. It was a little tricky to make them work, but I think I did okay. These stickers are actually printed on a slightly thicker cardstock, so it will bulk up your journal a little bit, but it wasn't so much that it really bothered me. I don't think it interfered with the use of the subsequent pages, so I think it's fine. I wanted to show you here how I like to use the palettes, the palette stickers that have just different shapes in the color schemes of this particular theme. I wanted to put them behind this little vinyl sticker so it sort of looked like she had a backdrop, like there was a little flower peeking out from behind her. I've done something similar in the past with Hubman and Chub Girl and their Paris themed box that I used for the January setup in the mystery journal that was before this one. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the top corner and in the description down below as well. Of course, you could also use these as a little functional element instead and you could have them on your weeklies to flag something important, but this is just how I like to use them. And I'm jumping in again with my tiny little vinyl stickers here just sprinkling them throughout so that's going to link kind of the top half of the decoration of the spread down to the bottom half sort of by leaving little breadcrumbs of stationary items never underestimate the power of a tiny sticker they are so versatile the calendar spread is all set and finished up so we're going to turn the page the next one we're going to move on to this one i'm calling the monthly snapshot this one has kind of evolved from my own goals, favorites and musings page that I include in my own journal. Let's say I gave it some rare candy and it has evolved into this version of itself. My own snapshot page is very much focused on what have I been doing? What am I doing? What am I working on? This one is a little bit more, it also has that element, but it's also about who am I and how am I feeling at the same time? Cause I wanted this journal to feel very self-care focused. 
I'm adding my headings directly onto the stickers from the Text Vintage Stationery palette over here. I really like the way they look like little swipes of a paintbrush. And I've deliberately used the entire top row because that meant I would have one in every color. Now when I'm adding them to the spread, which I have just divided into four kind of horizontal sections, I'm alternating which side I place these on. That's just gonna give us a bit of visual interest rather than having all of the headings down the left side. I feel like that would be very kind of left side heavy of the page. You can always balance it out with some decoration afterwards, but I thought I'd just kind of set myself up for success here and make things really balanced from the get-go. And I'm layering one of my tiny vinyl stickers on either side of that too, just to make it feel like part of the theme. To balance out the sizes a little bit, I've added some of our bigger stickers that feature the raccoons because they're so adorable, and I'm stamping my heading so that it will tie in nicely with the cover spread where I stamped the quote earlier. We like to have repeated elements to make things feel cohesive and like they were supposed to go together. Likewise with the washi tape, I want to make sure I've got a little bit of washi tape represented on every page to make things feel cohesive and intentional. For some reason, for me, when I'm using really cute stickers like these ones, it sends me into maximalism mode. I can't be cute and minimal at the same time. I don't know what to tell you. Here is the grid spacing guide for this page in case you want to try it in your own journal. And then we'll move on to the right page. And this one I'm calling one line a day. It could be a gratitude log. It's for however the winner wants to use it. I think that's a-okay. But to spice things up a little bit, rather than just having one flat line every day where the person who has won the journal or you, if you wanted to try this layout out, can write your one line a day, I'm breaking it into two columns and actually adding two spaces for your one line a day. So it's still a line, it's just over two halves, if that makes sense. And I'm highlighting every second row with a gray marker so that you can really differentiate where each one is supposed to go. We're gonna use the numbers off this sticker sheet here so that we can really make this functional. If I'd thought this through properly, I maybe would have made the numbers go top to bottom in the first column and then top to bottom in the second column because that might have had us mix up the colors a little bit more evenly. Unfortunately, by the time that occurred to me, I was already kind of halfway into the page, so it's gonna stay the way it is. I was worried about ripping the page by peeling up any of these stickers. That would worry me less in my own journal, but because this journal was not for me, I didn't wanna ruin anything unnecessarily. So we're just gonna roll with it. I don't think it looks bad, but I think it does look a little more unbalanced than I would like. August has 31 days, so I'm adding the 31 in the bottom row here, and here are the grid spacing sizes in case you'd like to copy. You don't have to add the 31st if you're using this for a different month. I'm gonna fill in that space opposite the 31st, so it's really obvious that that's like not part of the functional area, and we're gonna add the heading up the top and some decoration. That's two more pages set up and they are looking pretty cute. So let's turn the page and we'll move on to our habit tracker, which the folks at Hubman and Chubgirl have made really easy for me by including these stickers to track habits with. This one was actually so easy to set up. I just worked out where the middle of the page was. I positioned my first two in the middle over the top of that kind of on either side of that center space. And then I'm just adding the others directly in the pattern they were in on the sticker sheet because it already looked so good. Just leaving kind of two spaces in between each sticker and that way they're all kind of perfectly spaced and I don't have to write numbers I don't have to write the headings on here because they're not my habits to track like it's done I can't even really give you grid spacing guides for this one because that I didn't use any <laughs> like I just worked out the middle and worked around it from there sometimes when I'm trying to make two pages look really good next to each other I like to bring the washi tape that kind of lines the top and bottom or the left and right sides of the page across to the other side as well because that just kind of links them together makes them look like they belong together even when they're serving really different purposes so that's what I've done here and once I'm happy with where all my stickers are sitting on the page, we can move on to the next one. This one's gonna be my spending log. Well, not my spending log. This one's gonna be someone else's spending log. There are a lot of different ways you can approach keeping track of your finances in your journal. I have the way that I like to do it, which is to write down every single thing that I spend, but other people like to do just the really big purchases or things that they have been budgeting for. So the way that you approach this is totally up to you. I just posted actually a video showing you my finance slash cash flow journal, which is one that I started recently that is just for tracking this stuff. Here is the grid spacing guide for the spending log, and we're gonna talk about how to use it in a sec. You can find my 
finance journal video linked up the top here in the right corner or in the description down below if you want to find out more about how I like to do this. But for now, let's set this one up. So I've made these three columns here. We've got item on the left, category in the middle and cost on the end. So this person can track in whatever way they like things that they spend money on and give them a category. And this actually relates to a budget tracker back at the beginning of the journal so they can hopefully keep a kind of holistic view of their finances throughout the second half of this year. Also to make it a little bit easier to use and also to make the page look a little bit more interesting, I'm adding a row of a really light grey marker to every second line so it's easier to separate which line is for which item. These bundles really make it so easy to set these things up. I feel like we're tearing through this in record time. This next page actually spread. This one's going to go across the, both the left and right pages, which makes it a spread. This one is kind of a catch-all. This one I'm, I'm kind of just decorating a bit in the corners and then leaving it blank besides that because this journal being not for me, it's possible I've not considered some things that probably the person who ends up using it might need. So I'm trying to build in flexibility here by slightly decorating a page that they can use for something I haven't considered. And then if there isn't anything extra that they want to add, then they can use this just to play with the extra stationery that I send along with it. So everything that I use to make this theme, except for that little enamel pin that I showed you earlier on, has gone in the package that has gone to the winner of this journal, along with the extra stuff from the previous setup that we did for July, along with stuff from every other setup after after this one too. So if they just want to have a good time and add a quote page or something like that and do some junk journaling, they have that option too. I also left a completely blank spread in between each of the monthly setups. So after the weeklies from one before the cover page of the next, so that if they wanted to do memory keeping or add even more trackers that I haven't considered, then they have places to do those things. This next one that we're setting up now is very kind of self-care oriented. This one is a monthly reflection spread. So it's really designed to take a look back at the month at the end of it and have a look at what you did really well, what maybe you could have done better, what you were excited about, what was really fun and what you learned. And so there's a dedicated spread for that. This can be kind of a long form journaling kind of situation in each of these columns. Or if you would prefer, you could do this just with some dot points and you know, list things out um, if you wanted to do a more efficient version. This is not something I've ever done on a monthly basis in my own journal, but the gentleman who invented the bullet journal method, Ryder Carroll, really swears by monthly reflection as an integral part of the bullet journaling process. And I do think it's probably wonderful for mental health, so I thought it would be a good thing to include here. I'm not giving you a grid spacing guide on screen for this one because it's a really simple setup and I didn't really measure anything out. I just found the vertical center of the page and drew a line there, added headings kind of near the top, left some space for some decoration at the top and bottom, and that's it. So I don't think you need a grid spacing guide for that one, but most A5 journals have 26 dot grid spaces from left to right across the page, so half of that is 13. There you go. I told it to you. You can just find 13 dots in from the left or right side and that's where you put your vertical line and make it as tall as you want it to be. That's our reflection page. We're going on to the very first of the weekly spreads now and I find the weeklies kind of challenging for the mystery journal because in my own journal I can kind of do one or two weeklies at a time or I can set them all up in one go if I feel like it but it's a lot to think about on top of all of the spreads before that. I kind of break it up for myself. Can't do that for the mystery journal. I have to do all of them kind of over the course of a single month I set up the whole journal so that's a challenge, but I love a challenge. So we're going to try and do different weeklies throughout. Sometimes I will use the same weekly from one month to the next, but I'm trying not to use the same weekly twice in a single month. So this first one, I call it the Ruthly kind of box weekly. This one was inspired by Ruthie Journals on Instagram. She does the most amazing layouts and I have been stealing this one and using it over and over forever at this point. You kind of divide your page into six different spaces. So you divide it into two columns and then into three three rows and that gives you six boxes to play with and then some of them you use for decoration and some of them you use for planning and it's a good way to fit the uncomfortable kind of seven days of the week in a way that you can still decorate around them without it feeling obviously unbalanced. I always find that I don't want to have Saturday and Sunday in one space because I quite often do different things on those days. Here's grid spacing so you can copy this out if you'd like to but I don't like to always necessarily add a note section either to make it eight spaces so I really like this as a comfortable for your eyeballs lots of space to plan kind of a weekly 
And usually when I do this for my own journal, I actually draw these spaces into boxes, but I thought it would be fun this time just to use the highlighted every second line as kind of a visual indicator of where a day starts and ends. And the white spaces around that were where I was gonna put my decoration. And I've gone for kind of a gridded decoration style, which is very out of the ordinary for me, but I had lots of boxy stickers of all different sizes. And it just made this kind of gallery wall thing happen naturally. And I really like how it looks. I always like to keep my weeks together from Monday through to Sunday, which is why I've started this weekly from actually the 29th of July. The July weeklies went up to the 28th of July, so this way you still have a space for every day. We're going to move on to the second of the five weeklies for the month of August now. It's always a bit challenging too when a month has lots of weeklies that you need to set up within the same theme because then you have to just keep thinking of ideas. Somehow if you change the theme partway through it gets easier to kind of start again. We're doing vertical planning boxes for this weekly with just a smaller Monday one. Here's the grid spacing in case you want to try this one out for yourself. And this leaves us plenty of room to decorate. I've also strategically made the boxes the same width as my planner stickers here so that I could very easily put my Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And these ones have a little circle where you can write the number for each day of the month as well. So love when that happens. We're about to have a little visit from my kitty cat, by the way. If the asymmetry of this layout bothers you, then instead of having the Monday have its own kind of in-betweeny kind of row, you could have it on the same row as the Tuesdays and everything and give yourself a note space as well. And then you'll have eight boxes, a little area to write anything that's not, wow, he's really getting in there, anything that's not specifically related to a certain day and you're good to go. I also added tiny little stickers to the space in between the M-O-N, T-U-E, etc., of those days of the week titles because they just seemed like there was space for that. It was the perfect size. So I was like, why not? It's just asking me to do it. Who would I be if I said no? I also lined up my washi tape in this decoration with the very top of these boxes. And I just feel like that gave it some really nice flow for the eyeball. So I like it when a plan comes together. Also, yes, for some reason, I don't say eyes, I say eyeballs every time. I cannot explain it, but it's a millennial thing. I think I've noticed other millennials doing it too. So let me know. When you talk about eyes, do you say eyeballs? Because it's just more fun. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Something about the camera stacked up on books there just feels like it was so designed with me in mind. We're moving on to the next of the weeklies and I think this one is my favorite from this theme. This is a bit of an unusual one. I've almost kind of taken the Ruthie box layout and shrunk it a little bit because I wanted to have some negative space on this one, unlike some of the other weeklies that I've set up in this theme. And honestly, do you remember from the add-on set, there was a set of stickers that had the gold gilding. You'll see them in a sec anyway, with the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on them. I just really wanted to give them a moment to shine. No pun intended because they are gold gilded stickers, so they were always going to shine regardless of what I do. But I wanted them to really just be the spectacular moment that I envisioned them to be in my head. And I think it's going to work out. You'll see. These ones, aren't they pretty? So this is still a situation where I've divided the page into columns. But this time we have Monday in the first column, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the second column, Friday and Saturday in the third and then Sunday on its own out on the other side. And I feel like this looks really balanced. Here's the grid spacing. I possibly could have moved them a little bit higher on the page, but this is a brand new weekly layout to me. I've never done one like this before. And now I think it's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna be trying it in my own journal real soon. It also leaves heaps of space for decoration, which when you have this many beautiful things to be using is always a helpful thing. But I actually didn't want to go too hard on this one. I wanted to let those beautiful stickers breathe a little bit because that gold gilding is so delicate and pretty. I didn't want to overwhelm it. Also, these sections have lines on them, so they could be used for little to-do lists or something like that too. So I thought I'd include those there. These are thicker cardboard stickers though, so they may interfere with the thickness of your book in the long term, but I think it's worth it. They're stunning. Second last August Weekly here, we're going with a variation on the vertical box layout again. So last time we kind of had three on the top, three on the bottom, and one in its own row on the left side. This time we're going to do four on the top, four on the bottom, and we're going to have a note section so that there will be eight spaces 
notes for planning instead of seven. Sometimes I love a note section and I use it to bits, and sometimes I don't want one at all, so this way our winner of the mystery journal will be able to work out what kind of weekly they like to use, and if you want to experiment a little bit too, maybe this will help you to find out how you like your weeklies. Or if you fluctuate like me, it's okay to change your mind sometimes. Also, these freehand lines are so much faster to set up than when you're using a ruler. I really enjoyed that. This is the grid spacing for this setup, and we're going to move on to decorating now. I am absolutely going to use stickers that have the days of the week already written on them wherever possible, so we're going to go with the green ones this time so that every spread looks a little bit different. I love that they have that built into the stickers. It's a little bit hard at this point. I'm already starting to thicken up the journal quite a bit, even though this is only the second monthly setup in it, so sometimes putting a sticker over the binding is a little bit difficult and sometimes I don't like to have my weekly spaces cross the binding either but sometimes I don't mind again I change my mind about things so these are things for you to experiment and consider for yourself as well if you absolutely do not like having your planning space cross the binding like this then you can always just rather than offsetting the top row and the bottom row so there's space in the bottom left and the top right corners just align your boxes around that center page binding area instead and have them sit on top of each other and you won't have to worry about ever writing across the middle of the page I love staggered decoration though, so I really like the way this looks. To me, sometimes the awkwardness of writing across the binding is totally worth it to have a page that looks really cute, but to each their own. Would you have a look at that? I'm doing my gridded kind of gallery wall decoration again. I liked it so much on the previous weekly, the first one, that I think I'm into it now. I think I'm going to be a girl who grid decorates rather than overlapping things all the time. It's just mm, finding things out about myself. We're going to turn the page and move on to the very last weekly for this setup. And this one is kind of a classic column layout, but again, I'm trying to spice things up a little bit here. I'm using a gray pen this time instead of black, just to give us a bit of variation. It's a bit softer on the page. This is the N79 from Tombow. And instead of having all of my columns line up at the top and bottom, I'm actually going to stagger the alternate columns. So every second column is going to start a few dots, maybe like five dots. I can't remember exactly. I'll show you the grid spacing in a minute. It'll start a little bit lower and it will finish a little bit lower on the page. So Monday is oriented a little bit higher. Tuesday is oriented a bit lower and Wednesday will be in line with Monday and Thursday will be in line with Tuesday. And I'm going to highlight every second row with a different Tombow. This is the N89. It's a slightly lighter gray and a little bit cooler than the previous one so that you can really see where these boxes are starting and ending so that it's really clear where the actual planning is supposed to take place. I'm using my day of the week headers again from the planner kit stickers and I'm having to cut these ones down to make them fit again but I'm totally happy to make that sacrifice. It is such a good way to have them look really cohesive all the way across the page and I'm just borrowing this one. I'm cutting off the very edges of this one that's from a slightly different spot but the colors still kind of match. That's where I'm putting the notes heading and I'm trying to match the lettering to the kind of sans serif or lowercase lettering that is on the other ones too so that everything looks as cohesive as it can when one of them is hand lettered. Here is that grid spacing as promised. This one's a bit complicated, so you might want to take a screenshot. And of course, I wouldn't be me if I wasn't going to add some decoration. I feel like those little pockets that we've created next to the headings and underneath these planning areas are a really good opportunity to pop in some stickers and just kind of fill those spaces without feeling like anything too crazy is going on. I'm also using some of these strip stickers. They're kind of behaving a bit like a washi tape. I really didn't want to put anything across the binding this time though, so I'm actually cutting them in half and putting half on one side, half on the other side. Sometimes I change my mind about sticker placement and I have to peel one up to put something else under it like I just did there, but I think that's fine. Because this is the last of the weeklies for this setup, I kind of wanted to use it as an opportunity to use up the last of my favorite pieces of the set. So 
I'm adding the rest of the stamps in here because I just think they're gorgeous. I love that it's bringing some green to the page because it was very pink heavy previously. And I love the little touch of gold gilding that that adds without being like a lot of gold. It's really cute. Also, all the tiny little vinyl stickers, you can smush them into the smallest spaces. So I'm putting lots of those in here. Actually, at the time I was setting this up, I had some fountain pens and I was using a couple of them, but I wasn't really like into them. In the past couple of weeks, I've started to get really into fountain pens. So the fact that there are fountain pen stickers on this spread makes me really happy and throughout the rest of this setup as well. We need to add numbers here because we need to know what days things are so that we can plan properly on them. I'm using the space on the left side of each of these. And that is the entire setup for August of 2024 in the mystery journal. I think this setup is so cute. I love the little raccoon friends. It's funny, it's one of those ones that probably wouldn't look at home in my own journal, but I had such a good time making this come together. And it's really fun for me to use things from a specific set together. It's kind of like working to a brief and I love working to a brief. So thank you so much to the folks at Hubman and Chub Girl for sponsoring this video, for supplying the stationery that I've used in this one and for making such beautiful things available for the journaling community to decorate our stuff with because they are gorgeous and they are fun. If you have made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking around. Make sure you leave me your favorite stationery emoji in the comments so I know that you watched all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you stick around and hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber of the channel because I love stationery too. And I post two videos every week about stationery and bullet journaling and reading journaling and it's a fun time. If this one wasn't quite your vibe for a setup, I have a link on the screen right now to August in my own journal last year, which was very fantasy novel vibes. I have my own August coming next week, so look out for that and there's also a link here to another video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.